This is a 100k Instagram Q&A. I recently hit 100k on my Instagram and my TikTok and I decided to do a big Q&A over on my Instagram so you guys can get to know me a little bit better. In today's video, I'm gonna answer all of your questions about Islam. I actually got so many questions from you guys. I had to categorize them and split them into different videos. So I'm gonna have these videos coming in the next week so you can expect more questions, more answers in the coming week. Before we start, I'm just gonna go through some of the basics about me because I get these questions all the time and I should probably address them. So my name is Danish, I'm 24, I live in the UK. I am a biomedical science graduate and I'm a current third year medical student at the University of Aberdeen. There you go. Now you can stop asking me where I'm from, what I do and how old I am. I make content about Islam, medicine, productivity and health. So if you want to check out my socials or if you want to subscribe to my weekly newsletter on those topics, you can do so on this website. All of the links are down in the description below as well. For this video, I put all of the questions in the description and I put timestamps on the video. So if you want to skip ahead to any of the questions, you can do so and save yourself some time. Okay, so let's begin. Question one, what led you to making content about Islam? Everyone online has an identity. If you think about Matt Diavella, you think minimalism, productivity, high quality videos. If I say Ali Abdal, you think medicine, YouTube, money, finance, right? I thought, what would I want people to remember me by? What do I want my identity to be? There are already so many medic YouTubers out there and I didn't want to be another medic YouTuber. I wanted to be known as being a Muslim before I'm known as being a medical student. And also my religion is a huge part of my life. So I want that to come through with my content. Question two, every person has his or her turning point in Islam. What was yours? And someone else asked, do you have any painful past that has led you to Allah? I think they're both the same thing basically. Um, I'm not going to share any personal experiences because they're just personal to me. That's between me and Allah. Basically, my turning point in life was around 19 or 20. I kind of went through a bit of a difficult period. And when I came out of it, it was coming close to Islam that got me out of it. And I realized a bit of a pattern in life. At any moment when I've been close to Allah and I've been praying on time and I've been, you know, taking care of my Iman, life is easy. And at moments when life is really difficult, I'm not prioritizing my Iman. And I noticed that pattern and I was like, this, this is interesting. So I tried just focusing on my Iman and lo and behold, life just got easy. Whenever I'm practicing my faith properly and I'm putting effort in, I find that opportunities are opening up all over the place for me. Life is very easy. And even when I do face difficulty, because I'm close to Allah in that state, I can actually overcome the difficulty quite easily. And I find that I've got this support because Allah is always with me. So that's basically what led me to the relationship I have now with Islam. And I do want to say on that note, I'm not perfect. Like I'm far from perfect. I'm just an ordinary guy trying his best. And I share the best things on the internet with you guys. So don't be fooled by what you see on the internet. I'm not like some golden boy. I just show you guys the good things because I want to influence you to do good as well. Question three, what is the reason for consistency with prayers? Were your parents strict from a young age? My parents weren't strict in a sense that they like forced me to, but I feel like they did it the right way. They prayed themselves and they told me to pray. And I understood from a very young age that you as a Muslim should pray. So that was a known thing in my head. I actually built the habit of praying properly when I was around 19. So I moved away from home for university in Birmingham. This is way back in 2016, 17. And that was the first time I lived away from home. Nobody was with me. No parents were there to remind me to pray. When it's Friday for Jummah prayer, I had to go myself and remind myself and make sure I made that as well. And that's when I realized this is how you build the real habit to pray when nobody is around. So that's when I started to do those little habits you guys might have seen on my TikTok and Instagram. I used to leave my prayer mat in my room. It was out all the time, so it would remind me to pray. I used to stay in wudu all the time so that it was easier for me to pray at times when I needed to. I also had a piece of paper that I stuck on the wall in my room and I had F-Z-A-M-I for all the five daily prayers and I used to tick each one off every single day and that's, that really helped me so I'd highly recommend you do that as a student and if you are a student who lives away from home I'm telling you now if you can establish your five daily prayers whilst you're living alone and there's nobody to remind you you will find so much peace in your life. You'll have so many opportunities that come for you in the future. And if you're patient with your prayer and your salah and you know, your du'as, then goodness will come your way one way or another. You just have to be patient enough to see it through. Question four, how to stay away from sins slash bad habits? Uh, there are a lot of questions phrased in this way. So this is something you can apply to just staying away from any sin, any fitna, any bad habit. Right, let's break this down. Step one, your environment is very, very key. 
Do not go to a place where you are surrounded by sin. Don't go to a nightclub. Don't go hang around with people who do the sins that you're trying to stay away from, okay? Stay away from all of those environments and you're less likely to do the sin. Let's say you want to stop smoking, but you are sat in a shisha bath. How are you going to stop smoking if you're literally surrounded by it? Step two is to be very careful who you surround yourself with. You need your circle of friends to be people who influence you to do good habits. People who are going to remind you to pray. People who are going to remind you to do good deeds and keep, keep you away from the bad ones and keep you on the straight path. If you don't have any friends like that, in all honesty, you need new friends because you don't want to surround yourself with people who are going to lead you astray. You want to surround yourself with people who are going to keep you on the right path. If you don't have any friends like that, then it's better to be alone. No company is better than bad company. So sort out your environment and then sort out your company. And if you don't have anyone around you like that, then pray to Allah to give you good company. And I'm telling you, I've done this myself where I changed my circle of friends and I prayed for good people to come into my life. And wallahi, after months and months of making that dua, so many good friends have come into my life who now influence me to do good things and alhamdulillah for all of them. So be patient, guard your environment and fix your circle of friends. And one more thing is this hadith where the Prophet wasallam said, Verily, you will never leave anything for the sake of Allah Almighty, but that Allah will replace it with something better for you. So if you're trying to leave a sin or a bad habit or something, keep this in mind that if you leave it for the sake of Allah, Allah will, will give you something even better in life. So there is something really good for you waiting. All you have to do is let go of that sin. Question five, name one advantage of being a Muslim. There are so many advantages to being a Muslim, but this is probably my favorite. Allah says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله النفس إلا وسعها, and that translates to Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. This is from Surah Baqarah, and it's my favorite ayah in the Quran because it just gives me so much peace. You know, no matter how hard life gets, this will always give you peace. You can always come back to this. You know that Allah is not going to burden you with something that you cannot overcome. So that's one of the main benefits. There are like five billion other ones I could list, but that's probably my favorite. Question six, what is your favorite surah? My favorite surah is Surah Rahman. It has always been my favorite surah. I don't know what it is. I've just from a young age really liked it. And funnily enough, I've never actually sat down to read it and memorize it. I've just listened to it so many times. I've managed to memorize it. And that's something I recommend to so many people. Cut out your music and listen to Quran instead. And where you used to have music stuck in your head, you will start to have Quran stuck in your head instead. And you'll catch yourself reciting the Quran the way that you used to catch yourself listening to and singing music. So it's such a beautiful thing. Like replacing habits with something better like that is so good for you. Question seven, are you a Hafiz? No, unfortunately. Um, I would love to be a Hafiz, but I never really took interest in reciting the Quran until I was 18, 19. So maybe in the future, inshallah. Question eight, how do you know there is a God? It's a good question. For me personally, I believe that there has to be a God because there is no way that the things that exist in nature happen by chance. You look at the basic things like the sunrise and the sunset. Everyone is obsessed with sunsets. And you look at the sunset, the colors, the arrangement, the way the sky is just like so beautiful. How can something like that just be by chance? It has to have a creator. You know, the same way that I'm holding this phone. This phone's got like very straight edges. It's very organized and, you know, it has order to it. This phone doesn't just exist. It didn't just fall from the sky. Someone had to create this phone. Equally, the way that trees that are designed, the way that nature is designed, the way that the human body works. You know, in medicine, I learn about all the different processes in the body. The fact that they all interact with each other. And if something changes, it has an effect on everything else. And if something's out of place, you know, your body will do things to fix it. It's too intricate. It's way too intricate to be by chance. Like, I think it has to be, there has to be a creator. There has to be a God. That's why I believe in Allah. Question nine, what are some things your parents did to keep you close to Islam? So I think this was actually asked by a parent. Now, I can't tell you from a parent's perspective, but I'll give you the kid's perspective. The first thing is share things with your kids. Every time you learn something about Islam, share it with your children, because it will do two things. Kids pay attention to their parents. And my parents did this to me when I was younger. They would tell me stories about Islam, about the Prophet wasallam. Every time my dad reads something new about Islam, he will tell me. And he'll tell me the same stories over and over again throughout my life. So much so that they are now ingrained in my memory. And inshallah, when I'm older and I have my own children, I will tell them the same stories. 
and that acts as sadaqa jariya it brings me closer to islam and it helps to incorporate islam into your life more when you're hearing about it throughout your life in your childhood another thing is they led by example so my parents would tell me to pray but they themselves would be praying and i think that's so important uh, from a child's perspective and also from parents you can't expect your kids to do something if you're not doing it yourself you know practice what you preach and the final thing is my parents had an islamic perspective on everything in life so for example when we travel and we go on holiday my dad will tell me that we're traveling with the intention to see more of allah's creation around the world not because we want to go to a beach or have good weather and i think that is really important because it's emphasized the importance of having intentions that are tied to islam and to your religion in everything in life I'm really grateful for my parents, alhamdulillah. The older I get, the more I appreciate them and the more I realize parents are just, they're just gems. You cannot replace your parents and you should really look after your relationship with them. Question 10, how to balance deen and dunya? So deen is your iman, your faith and dunya means like the world, so like work and other things. I don't like to overcomplicate things, so let's keep this very simple. Your number one priority in life as a Muslim is your iman, your faith, and the foundation of your faith is your salah, your prayer. So prayer comes first. I don't care what it is that's in the way, prayer comes first. The second thing is probably your health, and with health comes your sleep, your diet and exercise. So those three things are important because you need to be in good health in order to pray and in order to do other things in life. And the third thing is probably your studies or your work. So that's the order of priority in my life. So when I plan my days and I organize my routine or I organize my week, it goes prayer first, then I think about health related things and then I do my work and my studies. And after that comes leisure time, hobbies, interests, chilling with friends, all the other things in life. Because they are important, but they're not as important as my salat. They're not as important as my health. They're not as important as, you know, my work or my studies. So I put those things first in that order. So if you want to balance your deen and your dunya, put your salah first. Remember that Allah is in control of everything. So if you don't take care of your relationship with Allah, you don't pray your salah, which is always at the top. All of these other things below, nothing's going to go to plan. If you are not praying and you're not paying attention to your relationship with Allah, do you think Allah is going to give you an easy life? Do you think he's going to bless you with ease and with opportunities? No. Allah is in control. The fact that my heart's beating and that you can hear this and you're looking at me on this video is because Allah allows you to. Right. So remember that. Don't disregard your relationship with Allah. You need to work on that. All it actually takes is for you to focus on your relationship with Allah, which is right at the top. And this is the foundation of everything. And everything else will just take care of itself. Allah will let everything be easy for you if you focus on your relationship with Him. Okay, so keep that in mind. I like to use the analogy of a bridge. Okay, so the bridge is your Iman. And the foundations, you know, the little rods and the poles that hold up the bridge. That's your Salah. That keeps your Iman strong. If you don't pray your Salah, then your bridge, it doesn't hold and it falls. Okay, but if you pray your Salah, then the bridge holds. And life is you walking across the bridge. You cannot walk across the bridge if it's not holding up and it doesn't hold up without your prayer. So build your bridge, make it strong. Question 11. What's your relationship like with your parents? That's a nice question. Um, Alhamdulillah, my parents are my best friends. You know, I share everything with my parents. I don't make any big decisions without having them on board. I know that my parents are the only people in the whole world who have my best interest at heart. So I can trust them with absolutely anything. And I have, you know, I've not always been this close to my parents, but I have worked on that relationship to make sure that it grows and it becomes like this. So if you're someone who's in a position where you don't have that kind of relationship with your parents, it's not the end of the world Like you can work on it. You can spend more time with them, speak to them more, open up to them more. And I'm telling you over time, it will be amazing if you can build a relationship like that with your parents you you don't really need anyone else in your life your parents are there for you no matter what it's just the most important relationship of all relationships in your life the same thing goes for my siblings as well family is the most important thing in life okay that wraps up all of the islam questions from the q a i'm going to record all of these videos in the coming week and have them up on the channel very very soon so if you want to see those videos subscribe to the channel and you'll see them first if you made it this far into the video thank you for watching i hope you benefited from it and inshallah i'll see you in the next one